methane, uh, as we know, has been uh, worked for many years ago. And this is one of the first works. Uh, don't know if you actually know, but the first copper emitter in the US was uh, built in Penn State, 1905. Armsby, Henry Armsby, is the person here. Uh, there used to be an animal nutrition institute at Penn State, and he's, uh, he built that cover emitter on the left side, it's a museum now. And they published this paper in 1930, uh, looking at the relationship, uh, they were looking at heat production, but they, they actually also uh, had the, uh, <clears throat> a relationship with drug intake and methane. And that's what they found, very high uh, correlation uh, between climate intake of, they looked at uh, mixed rations, forages, and methane in that calorie meter that I'm showing you there. So this is not anything new, uh, but it's, it's good to look at it again and uh, look at, actually the reason I'm talking about this is because we look at different ways of measuring methane and the relationship with climate intake. So we know this, this is one of the uh, papers that we had uh, uh, back, back in time. Those are treatment means, I think about 300, oh yeah, it's 377 treatment means. The relationship is, is pretty good, obviously, with climate intake, but I have a point here how low climate intake goes. So the wider the spread of the data, uh, it's obviously likely that you will have a better relationship. So we had some sheep data there, and that's why uh, intake was so low. And uh, again, a pretty good relationship. Then we have another data set. These are actually individual animal data that we collected through our uh, feed and nutrition network. And uh, we have a, a project there called uh, Global Network. That probably some of you uh, are aware of. And again, pretty good relationship, but about 3,000 uh, individual data. These are the chamber data that I'm showing you here. And as you, again, can expect, uh, the relationship was, uh, was pretty good. Other data, others have looked at this as well. These are Australian data, beef and dairy cattle. And uh, they also, again, show a very good relationship uh, if we look at diurnal uh, relationships and variation, um, we have done it and others have done it. This is from uh, the UK, data on, on the right side. Again, you will see that as cows eat, as animals eat, the uh, methane production increases. So it's, it's a straight kind of relationship there. There is little doubt about it. Uh, we also look very recently actually at uh, <coughs> different uh, frequencies of feeding and how, you know, this is actually looking at uh, meeting the requirements of the animal in a better way, is a very kind of data. And as I'm going to show you here, um, it's not just overall dramatic intake, but also timing of uh, feeding and that also has some impact on, on methane emissions. So there are, there are three treatments here. This is a TMR, the first one. We feed typically once a day. So once a day feeding that blue line, quite a bit of variability over the day. And it's all related to when the animals eat. Uh, another one, this, this other two treatments were partial uh, mixed ration TMRs fed three times a day or six times a day. And, and the reason I'm pointing this here is uh, the more often you feed, the variability in methane emissions actually increases. So you have a flattened line if you look at the green line here compared to the other lines uh, when you are feeding more frequently. Is that uh, green feed data? This is all green feed data. So uh, back to our uh, FNM, Again, to point out this uh, relationship with Remedy Intake. You have seen some of this paper probably already published. This is the dairy database. Um, <clears throat> the models uh, that uh, we developed there 
clearly show that trimethine Davis again was the driving factor for methane emissions in dairy cows. These prediction equations, they will improve. The more data you add to the, to the model, the, the more uh, variables you add to the model, but trimethane intake was still the driving factor uh, for methane emissions in dairy cows. Same with beef, this is the beef database uh, that we published, and you will have the same kind of relationship and, uh, and strength of granite intake in the driving methane emissions in beef cattle as well. So uh, we did this, uh, again, overall analysis of uh, uh, the dairy data that we had, and this paper uh, was published a couple of years ago or more. This is what we were booking at that time. We had all data and then we had different methods of measuring methane. So uh, respiration chambers, see. yeah, anyway, this, this were the methods that we, we, we had in the database, Greenfeed and SF6. Uh, anywhere from 4,000 individual animals uh, to 3,000 and 7, 100 or so and 400 for uh, the SF6 data. So then we look at these relationships uh, with different factors <clears throat> and dry methane day was again number one. Uh, but what I was surprised to see was that uh, the relationship for the different methods was quite different. So for respiration chambers we had a pretty good relationship. Uh, you are not going to see all the numbers here, 